everyone, Dr. Luke Peterson here, physical therapist with the Knee Replacement Therapist. In this episode of the Need to Know Show, we're going to talk about plantar fasciitis or fasciosis and how you might be at risk for developing it and how to manage it after knee replacement surgery. So today we're talking about plantar fasciitis or plantar fasciosis and um, why it might be something that you develop after knee replacement surgery and what can we do to effectively uh, manage it and decrease and get rid of it. So your plantar fascia is this very thick um, connective tissue, uh, ligamentous tissue, tissue that's kind of the same as your ligaments, and it's this very um, thick tissue that goes from your heel, the bottom of your heel, and goes up to kind of your forefoot, um, the ball of your foot, and on and connects to your toes and different parts of your toes as well. And it's really um, there to support the arches of your foot. Um, it's there to help with the functioning of your foot when you're doing things like walking, when you're running, um, there's a very um, significant connection between your plantar fascia and your big toe and the mobility of your big toe to extend and um, flex up and down, especially like when you're pushing off when you're walking and when you're pushing off from your foot. Um, very important for general function and um, mobility. So what can happen is that this fascia, um, so fasciitis, would be inflammation of the fascia. And this is kind of that first stage, first thing that happens, um, usually due to uh, increase in activity levels, um, but also obviously things related to your biomechanics and your movements can make you a little bit more prone to it. Um, some things that increase your risk of developing plantar fasciitis or fasciosis is um, being overweight or obese can increase your risk and having poor mobility in your ankles. So poor dorsiflexion, so that ability to bend your ankles, um, your foot upward, toes toward your head, um, it, having limited dorsiflexion mobility can also increase your risk of developing plantar fasciitis. Plantar fasciosis is the same thing, but it's making it um, it's now looking at it as a chronic condition, a long-term condition. So fasciitis is kind of that short-term inflammation. Plantar fasciosis is more of the chronic um, degenerative changes that can occur to the plantar fascia on the bottom of your foot. And where people who get this pain in the bottom of their foot where they fall kind of in that spectrum from acute inflammation to um, that chronic changes. You know, everyone kind of falls somewhere on that spectrum and do more people fall on one side where it's more chronic or if it's more acute, um, that's kind of still up for debate um, between a lot of people. But anyways, so why are you at risk for this after knee replacement surgery? Well, when you have um, knee arthritis and knee pain, a lot of times you have range of motion limitations. You have decreased knee extension, you have decreased knee straightening, um, you have decreased knee flexion or bending, and this can significantly affect your movements, especially your walking. And what can happen is that these changes can lead to changes in your biomechanics and how you move. And we talked about this before about the body being this interconnected change. So one body part changing, one part of the chain changing is going to affect the whole links, all the links of the chain in some way. And so you, a lot of cases, individuals who have long-term knee pain, arthritis, are probably moving a little differently and are probably already having some increased stresses and increased forces through the plantar fascia that are causing some degenerative changes. So this, in a lot of cases, is something that's already going on even before going through knee replacement surgery, um, even if you may not have had that plantar fasciitis pain before. And the other thing to think about is after surgery, you're going to be moving differently. You're going to have improved 
range of motion in the knee as you recover and get better. And so what that means is you're going to walk differently, you're going to move differently. And as your knee range of motion changes, it's going to change those dynamics in your ankle and in your heel and foot. And so, for example, you know, you might have more pronation or supination, so more movement kind of in that lateral plane of your foot. You're going to have movement kind of also in the um, kind of other planes as well. And basically what this means in a simplified version is that you're going to have different forces acting on that connective tissue of your plantar fascia. And with that going on, you might start to get... Um, pain and discomfort and stiffness of the fascia. Um, one of the very common signs is first thing in the morning when you wake up is very, very extreme pain when you take those first steps and then it kind of eases up over time. And then maybe if you do, you know, very prolonged activity, walking a lot or whatever it may be, then it kind of starts to act up more. Um, but basically you treat plantar fasciitis, plantar fasciosis, just like you would treat any type of, um, tendinosis or tendinitis of the body. And one of the main things is um, progressively starting to um, stress that area. And what we do that is through strengthening exercises. So the most common strengthening exercise, you know, you don't necessarily strengthen your fasciitis. It's not a muscle, but you're able to increase the tensile strength and durability of the, the ligament and the fascia. And you can do that through heel raises, the most common. Some of them do heel raises from a, um, a, a decline position. So your foot actually starts lower than where your toes are, or your heel starts lower than your toes. And doing these elevated heel raises, um, you can do them off of like a, having a towel under your toes. You can do them off of a step, things like that. But building that strength, so that progressive strengthening of your foot and your ankle is going to progressively improve the tensile strength and durability of the fascia and lead to decreased pain. Um, some other ways for management, you can, you know, obviously you want to look at your footwear and make sure you have good supportive footwear that's appropriate for you. You want to, you know, you can also incorporate some stretching. I find that people overemphasize the stretching and don't focus enough on strengthening as well. But um, you can do some stretching for some relief, but really you want to focus on the heel raises and the strengthening. Um, some other things are you can look into orthotics potentially if it gets to that point. Um, some people find orthotics beneficial. Some people it doesn't help as much, similar to a lot of things. Um, and then also there's night splints. So sleeping with a splint on your foot and ankle to hold it in that stretched position at night. So stretching the fascia through the night. Um, there's some studies that show that that also has some benefit. Um, but if I had to look at the most important things, I'd say make sure you have good supportive footwear. Make sure that you are progressively returning to any activities. So if you, you know, uh, fasciitis or fasciosis, and a lot of times it's just an overuse type of um, thing going on. So you kind of jump back into activities after surgery a little too quickly, maybe, and you just have to kind of decrease your activities a little bit or modify it, cross train, things like that. And then also progressively stressing those tissues. So doing strengthening exercises, heel raises um, for a matter of weeks to maybe even months. And that will start to strengthen the tensile force and ability of those tissues and lead to decreased pain, improved activity tolerance, and sets you on the road to feeling better and um, doing the activities that you like and enjoy. So this has been the Need to Know Show. We were talking about plantar fasciosis or fasciitis after knee replacement surgery, um, why you might be at a slight increased risk of getting this, and what you can do to effectively manage it as well. Thank you very much for watching, everyone, and take care.